זה כמו קמפי מיקרופון, תה. עובד כתוב וואו. HBO's industry starts with a dark unsettling circumstance that brings some heavy tension into the story just about 40 minutes through the first episode. The death of Hari fits into what storytellers call the inciting incident, an occurrence that lights the spark for the tension of the story, the consequences of which must be dealt with for this tension to be resolved. However, Just about 10 minutes after this unsettling build up of events Harper the protagonist is seen nonchalantly taking a selfie eating a burger in a hotel room after winning it big with a client at the markets This is what opens up a dangerous problem for the show It takes merely 10 minutes for the story to move on and away from this startling event thus killing off tension that was built from the beginning of the show instead of resolving it right now i am having a lot of tension about whether you'll hit the subscribe button or not so please do consider resolving this tension what seems weird to me is how little the show cares about its own plot elements take the case of an entire arc devoted to the character of greg sometimes he is weirdly far right in his political leanings Other times he gets high at parties and proceeds to hit himself in a very grotesque fashion. All these events in and of themselves carry a shock value, but they don't add up to anything that resembles a character. They are conveniently assigned to Greg for the sake of the moment, not the character. But this is how most of industry's story is told. One minute you're made to feel the gravity of a situation, the next minute they suck out the air of tension, giving rise to a vacuum where all these events float and are left unaddressed. And just like the show, it's really surprising to see how quickly Harper disposes of her own humanity, not just after Harry's death, but throughout the series. She doesn't exhibit any human principle. I don't care about the electronic trail or the audio trail either. It's the principle. Or interesting characteristic with respect to her setting in the financial world. She does talk about her past academic pleasures. I actually wrote a paper on the moral case for capitalism. That must have been short. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was 8000 words. And a passion for the markets. But instead of showing this, the show is more interested in her more fundamental animalistic drives, the fulfillment of sexual pleasures. HBO's industry is generally preoccupied with sex, fantasy and drugs. Harper is constantly talking about the phallus, stream of uncut dicks, as the camera keeps a consistent gaze on it time and again, with Harper sucking on a vape when she is in helpless situations. a very simplistic way of reducing her character to the most primal impulses this isn't limited to her character it extends to several other plot situations and arcs and let me clarify the problem isn't that industry is too risky that it tries to unapologetically bring out some bravery in its progressive outlook towards soft porn that would mean giving the show too much credit the problem is that on the other hand The characters themselves are far too regressive in their motives. They are monolithic, pleasure-seeking creatures, desperately engaging in edgy cliches. As a result, instead of acting like a capable human, Harper instead acts like an animal, driven by the fight-flight-freeze response. Whenever Harper is put in a slightly challenging situation, she either starts fighting, runs away from it, or sits frozen unable to do or say anything this is not a character flaw it's a lack of character itself in episode 6 of the show in what seems to be a freudian slip harper talks about the incident where eric debriefed her in a locked room i was like 
The like reptilian part of my brain was like, how the fuck am I gonna get out? Little does she realize that her reptilian brain guides essentially all her behavior through the season. Harper locks herself in a cage of sorts, seems to constantly blame the world for her situation, all the while mistreating the people around her. There are some exceptions to this rule, like when she speaks up against Kenny for harassing Yasmin, but they are just standalone instances that fail to form the core of her character. In addition, Harper doesn't face a single consequence for all her wrongdoings. She lies about her college degree, almost sabotages Eric's career on the basis of her reductive testimony against him. I was frankly shocked when she didn't even hesitate with signing the NDA, forget even giving it a read. Instead, the show simply jumps ahead to party scenes with our young graduates consistently cheating on each other and going numb to the consequences of their actions. All of this without addressing the crucial emotional plot points of the show. Industry falls short of achieving what an HBO show like Succession is able to. We're, we're in good shape, Dad. You just keep getting better. You are uh, fucking idiot. Even though both shows have some overarching resemblances, like having shitty people at positions of power or carrying a satirical purpose, the reason why succession is better than industry involves a show and tell rule. Look, I'm a hairy old bastard who everybody hates, yada yada. But I fucking love news and news people. Succession goes ahead and shows us a chaotic environment of a conglomerate company, business acquisitions, and family politics while having its characters talk about sex and scream F-bombs. So, okay, okay. So the, does that mean we were able to fuck? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ken, what do you think of the pussycat? Want it? Uh, no, not me. Business is my fucking. This makes sexuality a part of conversations instead of being a part of what the camera shows therein allowing the more important themes to take their rightful place. Industry, on the other hand, keeps business and finance and capitalism. The world's pregnant with terrorists. Right. And this is a play for the end. Only a part of the conversation. The show rarely shows us much of Harper actually being at her desk and doing her job at the markets. And on one rare occasion that it properly does so, she sucks at it. Even worse, it doesn't have any consequences to the plot. No, no, it was a 140k loss. Profit. 200k profit. I executed for you pre-close. We never really witness a scene where she is a protagonist at trading. We just see her deliver some impressive pitches. She is merely a go-getter, which does not make her a special character in the world of business. And while business is not the priority, a more consistent priority for the show is sex and fantasy. Of what the show shows against what it tells, industry becomes a satire of itself, whereas succession thrusts its satire onto the characters, all the while their fundamental drives remaining aligned towards the sophisticated game of power politics. The Roys lose their chances every time they fuck up, they have to use tact and strategy to get their way instead of getting lost in fantasy. And the outcome of this approach can be observed in how Succession's focus on business establishes consequences for Waystar Royko's future. The FBI is downstairs. What? Yeah. Unlike the business in industry, which only adds money to bank accounts or subtracts clients, all along failing to make us realize the consequences of this loss to peer point. The characters who lose their jobs in industry aren't even the main characters. In fact, Harper herself doesn't lose anything in this entire season, so her character is never even tested. She has no reason to change and stays afloat. Even though the finale shows us Harper faltering at giving her speech, 
her shot at the desk is never endangered considering that the RIF was hyped up to be the biggest threat to all the graduates it's funny that with the exception of guz none of the speeches feel like they have any difference in the outcome of the show and this makes the authorities at peer point very bad antagonists the stakes are never really felt because as i might summarize the tension is killed off by misdirected motivations in human characters and mistreated plot points to realize how succession takes itself more seriously on a human level we have to go back to the first point of this essay we have to realize how this show treats death as compared to industry the death of a waiter a character who has no significance to the main plot and yet the death manages to carry huge consequences just as any death should kendall's soul gets completely shattered by the incident logan meets the family of the victim personally to make sure there are no legal setbacks leading to one of the most emotionally heavy scenes of the show and just like that a death of an unknown young fellow damages kendall our protagonist for the seasons to come he has to deal with this incident long after it has gone because it has changed the meaning of his life it is simply startling to me in the same vein to see how harper hardly even remembers that someone who was closest to her in the company has died someone needs to actively remind her of it and yet her arc remains unchanged by this incident the absence of hari has no clear consequences for the main plot of industry either and if there are no major consequences to the show's darkest moment if these young graduates are all unchanged by the idea that hari probably died because of consuming the wrong substances then should we really care about the characters the stakes the story of this show in the finale harper also implies she hates being treated like a victim this is another instance of unintentional irony because time and again harper projects her helplessness in key situations of the story you made a lot of you shouldn't be calling clients you made a mistake so what the fuck do you think you're doing instead of facing consequences for her wrong doings eric is the only truly human character of industry given a baseball bat and a compelling little monologue to make a case for his perspective on the world of finance people like us born at the bottom where would you put our percentage chance of ever making that top quintile in this season Eric is the best character of the show because his central drive is evident no matter who he is outside the office in the business of the markets he is an interesting driven person who has had quite funny experiences with clients I had gastroenteritis <laughs> threw up at the table Shop said it was the first interesting thing to come out of my mouth all night Human beings have a unique ability to make life mean something for themselves. Therefore, good characters are those who make meaning of the darkest, most significant events of a story. To be changed by circumstance seems intrinsic to them. They might turn good, they might turn bad. You said I never killed anyone. Juice is loose, baby. But the way their character arc responds to a pivotal event makes the story worth it. If you would ask me my favorite character from the same genre, I'd surely give it to Michael Berry from The Big Short, who just needed a single scene to show how his character connects on an emotional level to the tragedy of his They're past. Up. Highest fraud rates since the 19th. and how that has a relevance to how he views the stock markets but enough talk about humans there's a rabbit in hbo succession that can completely change your perspective on that brilliant show while industry can't treat its human characters well 
Succession knows how to treat its animal characters much better. So to find out how, check out this Succession essay on your end screens right now.